Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. How are we all doing out there, gang? Thanks to my previous guest, Barry Matthews, I've started running again. And let me tell you, my legs are aching like hell. So I'm recording this podcast with restless leg syndrome. And yes, I'm that annoying guy that just shakes his legs up and down on occasion when he's just sat relaxing. A few years ago, I ran three half marathons. But man, fitness leaves you all too quickly. And I've had to start from scratch using the Couch Potato to 5K app. But I've got enough self-awareness to know you didn't tune in to hear running tales of an ageing podcaster, did you? So enough of me talking about healing my legs. That's not what you want to hear. How about self-healing cars and CES in Vegas? I thought so. I know why you guys are really here. Now, car recalls are currently at an all-time high. And to make matters worse, 57 million vehicles on the US roads have unrepaired defects. Why? Well, despite the publication of recalls, car owners often remain unaware of them or they just simply ignore them. And low recall completion rates for both physical defects and software ones alike, can often have devastating effects, especially when software glitches could become life-threatening. Now, I don't want to reveal too many spoilers in my intro, so buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Tel Aviv in Israel so we can speak with Roger Ordman from Aura Labs, and he's going to talk about bringing the concept of self-healing cars to life. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Thank you, Neil. I'm really excited to be on the show. And my name is Roger Ordman. I run marketing for Aurora Labs. Uh, We're an automotive tech startup from Tel Aviv in Israel. And what we're doing is we're ushering in the era of the self-healing car. As soon as you said the word self-healing car, it kind of reminded me of Stephen King's Christine. But before we go there, Aurora Labs is pioneering self-healing software for connected cars to enable OEMs to proactively respond to future vehicle software architectures, processes and services. But for anyone listening, what does that mean? I mean, can you set the scene and offer a bit of an overview of the kind of problems that you're solving and what makes you guys unique? All new automotive and mobility innovations, they're all software driven. In a high-end semi-autonomous car today already, there's over 100 million lines of code. And just to put that in perspective, that's about seven times more than in the F-35 fighter jet. Wow. So this is crazy amount of software that's going into cars. And the future is there's going to be more and more and more because this is it's all software driven. So the challenges that the software, the car makers are having are to enable shorter development cycles because people want new features quicker and faster than ever before. They need better testing environments in the manufacturing plants, and they want continuous improvements to the software, even after the cars left the plant. So these are all vital to the successful change the automotive industry is going through. What we're at Aurora Labs are doing, we're, our self-healing software it enables the car manufacturers to detect software bugs as they occur, fix them without the car stopping to work, and update them seamlessly when new software is available. Now, when I was researching you guys, I wanted to try and understand the problem. And I quickly read that the car recalls are now an all-time high. And to make matters worse, I think 57 million vehicles on US roads alone have unrepaired defects. So just to help people listening understand the scale of this problem, can you expand on why you think car recalls are so high and how most car owners often remain unaware of them? Or if they do get that little letter come through the post, they just simply ignore them. Uh, Yeah, it it is a problem. But... You know, with more and more software-driven features in the car, and we're talking, you know, from software features such as adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning, and also to convenience features such as parking assistance, it's really no wonder so many more bugs and so much more software in the car. And software by nature is never complete. Statistically, there will always be bugs or glitches present. Some of them are critical, some not. And there will always be a roadmap of ongoing improvements and features. And so all of these are reasons for a software recall. But as you said, sending a letter in the post or an email or an SMS to the driver, to the owner, even if it reaches that person, because you know what happens if you sell the car to somebody else, how does the car manufacturer now know who has that car? But say the letter the, the net, it reaches the person and then expecting them to read it and then expecting them to take time out of their day to go to a garage or a dealership to get the updates, it's not realistic. And this directly leads to the 57 million cars you mentioned 
they're driving on the US roads today with unrepaired defects. So, you know, like your smartphone gets its software updates to the apps and to the OS over the air, the same is required for cars. That's where the future is. Tesla's already successfully doing this and has been doing it for a while. Uh, and the other car manufacturers will be yeah, following suit and they'll be using the over the air updates too. And low recall completion rates, both for physical defects and software ones alike, can have devastating effects for obvious reasons. But do you think that in many cases, things like a software glitch in a car could actually become life-threatening if, if it wasn't treated? It's a good question, Neil. I mean, with everything in the car being software-driven, you know, from fuel injection and the brakes to the climate control, it will depend where the software glitch is found. So obviously a bug in the seat heating mechanism, well, uncomfortable, it won't be life-threatening. Uh, however, as more and more safety mechanisms are based on sensors and software, the need for them to always and reliably work is critical. So a bug in any of the ADAS or assisting driving systems could certainly become life-threatening. And last year, only last year, uh, a software glitch in, in a major US manufacturer's airbag system stopped them from being deployed uh, when needed. And this, of course, led, unfortunately, to disastrous and fatal results. So how are you guys helping to minimise the number of software recalls at Aurora Labs? Well, Neil, at Aurora Labs, we are uniquely addressing this problem of software-related recalls by using machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyse the correct behaviour of the software in the car. And then we use these techniques, technologies to detect any anomaly in this behaviour. So we can then identify at a very as a line of code resolution where the bug is occurring, and this is tremendously useful for the car manufacturers when debugging and fixing the code. It replaces the current situation where car manufacturers are often only aware of a problem when they've caused serious and often fatal outcomes. So how are we helping minimize software recalls? By helping identify where the problems are much earlier in the process and far before anything serious has happened to the driver or pedestrians. So whether it is a car, a smart TV, a toaster, or whatever, I mean, we're, living, we're filling our lives with always connected devices now. But it does seem to me that when we walk out of a store or a showroom, very few people are thinking of software bugs or security bugs, or if they're actually going to be fixed on that device that they've just bought in three years' time. So do you think that people need to be more aware of things like this when they're making a purchase of anything that's got that always online connection? It's a good question. It's a question of motivations. And I think uh, there's two, two motivations here. On the one hand, as devices become connected and multifunctional, so doing more than just the one thing you know, were used to doing, so not just washing, but also connecting and giving you updates, uh, not just driving, not just a car that can drive you, but a car that can drive yourself and can give you more entertainment and so on. So as more devices are becoming connected and multifunctional, I think the need for software updates will grow, especially from the users. So the ability uh, to conveniently fix bugs will be economical for the manufacturers. They'll be looking at introducing over-the-air updates to remotely fix the bugs and the security problems that otherwise they would have had to send a technician for. So it's going to save them money and make them more competitive. And from a user's perspective, I think they'll be looking more for the desire for new features and services. That will be their motivation. They want a system which can continuously improve and get better over time and something which once they bought it, you know, a week later it's already out of date. So different motivations for different people in the ecosystem. So again, when researching Aurora Labs, I quickly learned that your teams are detecting line of code faults to predict downtime events, fixing errors on the go and also enabling reliable and cost effective rollouts of new automotive features to all ECUs in the vehicle, but most importantly, without any downtime for the user. So with this in mind, are you essentially making self-healing connected cars a reality right now and not just in the future? Well, this is a great question, and this is this is exactly what we're striving for. Um, we believe that as cars are becoming more autonomous in the way they drive, become more autonomous in the way they heal themselves. So a car which can identify using artificial intelligence what's going on on the road, make decisions based on the streets, uh, the street and the, and the kind of traffic, and then decide to make take an action such as drive left or right. We believe our software is enabling the self-heating car which can identify the behavior of the software in the vehicle, the health of that software, identify where problems are happening and fix them before they start causing any uh, malfunctions or downtime of the vehicle. So yes, the self-heating car is becoming a reality. Um, different car manufacturers will be rolling out self-heating cars at different stages. It will take, you know, the car industry is 
it moves at its own pace. It might take some time until you have a self-heating car in your garage, but it's definitely the way forward. And you guys have also been recognised by Gartner as a cool vendor. I mean, that's got to make you incredibly proud that you're doing the right thing, hasn't it? Well, recognition by industry and analysts such as Gartner are, are wonderful. But to be honest, getting recognition from the leading software developers in these major car manufacturers is much better. You know, when they recognise that our software is unique, is innovative and can solve them problems that they are facing in changing their industry and becoming mobility services companies and not just car manufacturers, having these very intelligent people say, hey, this is this is brilliant stuff. This is really unique. That is recognition that is uh, priceless. Now, you do sound incredibly calm and relaxed at the moment, but maybe this is the calm before the storm because you're going to have an appearance at the CES show in Vegas in January. And as most people listening know, it could be pretty chaotic. Where can listeners find you and what can they expect if they're attending CES this year? Well, where they can find us is in the Tech East section. The North Hall is a vehicle technology area right next to Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> that's, where, that's where we'll be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to pop by and, uh, and set up a meeting. We'll be demonstrating our um, self heating software the, from the detect and the fix and the update, all three stages. Uh, we'll be meeting with the car manufacturer, senior car manufacturer executives. We'll be meeting with analysts and reporters. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of movements happening and we, we, we're happy to, we're, we're really engaging them. In a, in a vast and uh, worldwide way, we, we've got a, we opened an office last year in um, in Munich in Germany, and we'll be looking to open an office in Detroit in 2019. So there's a lot of growth happening. There's a lot happening in our area, um, and CS will be a great way to start the year by kicking it off with some important meetings with senior executives. Is it your first CES or have you been there before? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I've been many times. <laughs> <laughs> So you know exactly it's, what to expect. It's a bit crazy there. It really is a bit crazy. Yeah. But, um, it's the place to be now. And interestingly enough, um, whereas before, you know, CES Consumer Electronics Show was all about televisions and home appliances and so on, it's becoming a major exhibition conference now for automotive. And I think that is a sign of the shift where the car is becoming from becoming a machine that people buy and use to becoming a consumer electronic, which we consume by consuming, it might me, cha- me indicate that the, the, the buying habits of cars and buying habits and mobility services are changing. So watch this space because automotive world is changing for our eyes. Now, typically, I would imagine that you wouldn't uh, be able to get out or even see daylight for the days that you're there. But if you do get any downtime, do you do you go out and look for anything that interests you while you're there? Uh, well, that's, I think the just the connection between yeah. the different worlds. I think this is where it's becoming very interesting. Whereas devices up till now were standalone devices, everything did its own function that it was designed for. Where we're seeing the connected world of smart cities and smart homes and smart cars mm-hmm. and the connection between and the interaction between them, I think these are creating maybe even as of yet unseen use cases that are going to evolve out of these connected worlds. And I think this is very, very interesting. So I often find, to be honest, going to see the smaller startups they might have the more out there ideas on how they think things can connect is where you get some of the more interesting ideas and the more interesting discussions happening. Well, if there is anyone listening that's attending CES, maybe wants to meet with you guys, have a conversation with you, or just stay up to speed with developments on your website and social media channels, what's the best way of reaching out to your team and contacting them and carrying on that conversation or just uh, following you on your website? Well, carrier pigeon, we find, is the most efficient and uh, reliable. Uh, <laughs> but barring that, Aurora Labs on LinkedIn, uh, we, we, we are always updating our presence on LinkedIn. We find that a great way to communicate with, um, with our followers and with our community at large. Um, our website is auroralabs.com, and there's a, connect, there's a contact us section there where you can uh, schedule, send us an email, we'll uh, meet up at CES or anywhere else. We're traveling the world and we're happy to come and meet people and discuss use cases and how we can bring value to them well i love what you're doing there at aurora labs and the concept of the self-healing car an introduction of predictive and continual software monitoring so i wish you the best of luck i'd love to get in contact with you again next year find out how you got on at ces but more than anything just a big thank you for talking with me today thanks thank you very much neil I must admit, listening to Roger's vision of a self-healing car reminded me of watching Stephen King's movie adaptation of Christine, where Arnie Cunningham says, 
Okay. Show me. <laughs> it's, it's like everything that I grew up dreaming of one day is now coming to life. And I'm truly grateful for being able to see that whole process and how it's now taking shape. Because it really is a great time to be alive, isn't it? And yes, car recalls are at an all-time high. And the fact that 57 million vehicles on the US roads have unrepaired defects alone is staggering. But the introduction of predictive and continual software monitoring, coupled with over-the-air technology, automakers can now improve the standard procedure of automotive recalls for software and ultimately reduce life-threatening glitches. And for me, that's even cooler than the 1958 Plymouth Fury called Christine. But just don't tell her I told you that, right? But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, or pop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. If you go to podcasts, you can even leave me a virtual voicemail. And a quick message from someone called Steve in Bedfordshire says, on your alternative Christmas movie list, check out Black Christmas. I must admit, I've not heard of that one. I seem to remember a song of a similar name by a group called Ten Benson. But the film, that one seems to have passed me by. So I will check that one out, Steve. Thanks for your suggestion. Everyone else, keep those Christmas movies coming in. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.